Mexico. Okay, and welcome to Mahawal. This is the, the name of this town, Mahawal. Actually, it is a village. It's a very, very small village situated on the southeastern Yucatan Peninsula. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure once you have heard this name, the Yucatan Peninsula, which is a such important area of the Mayan Empire. Well, it just one hour, actually, to your left, this is Jack Chauvin, and now we're coming back to the port. Okay. So, I hope you have enjoyed the ride. But well, let's visit the, the real ones. The real ones where we are going to climb all the way to the top. Jack Chauvin is just one of the very few archaeological sites where we are still allowed to climb structures okay you might be in, you might be in before in Tulum or Chichen Itza but in Tulum and Chichen Itza you can't climb anymore fortunately in this Mayan ruins Jack Chauvin we can do it so if this is the very very first time you climb a Mayan temple enjoy it but be careful please be careful and uh, actually going up is not an issue Coming down is a problem. Okay, do it by your sideways. I know that it could be easier just to roll down, but please don't do it. Otherwise, we have to sign, We, I mean, we have to do a lot of paperwork. Well, we still have archeological remains. We still have ancient Mayan cities. And how many of them approximately? In all over the Yucatans, there are 2,000 archaeological remains, but just 10% of them, that means that 200 archaeological sites have been excavated and now they are open to the public. And Chak Chauvin is one of them. From at the beginning I mentioned the two most famous archaeological sites, Tulum and Chichen Itza, but guess what? Chak Chauvin, it is much older at least 700 years older than Chichen Itza and Tulu because Jack Chauvin was built mostly in the classic period of the Mayas in other words, in their splendorous time of the Mayan people civilization, temples, mathematics, you know, etc, etc but well, yeah, also predictions but one of the ancient customs among the Mayan people it is a custom for beauty. It is flattered foreheads. And back in days, the Mayan children, once they were born, they had to wear a kind of wooden artifact which was set up between the forehead and the neck in order to make pressure, especially on the forehead. Eventually, because of the softness of our forehead when we are born, Eventually, the, for the forehead got flattened and it went backwards. Okay, this is a custom for beauty. Besides this, dental decoration. The Mayan people, they loved it to get pierced their frontal teeth. Let's say that in the whole Americas, the Mayan people, they were the first dentists in these areas because basically they used tiny uh, tools in order to make holes through their frontal teeth. And afterwards, those holes were pierced. What did they use to pierce them? Volcanic stones or precious stones. In the whole Mayan area, we don't have gold mines nor silver mines, any metal, just volcanic stones. From where? Guatemala and the state of Chiapas in Mexico and Honduras as well. Well, and, and also the Mayans, they practice on purpose on their children also for beauty and for social status crossed eyes or estrabism you know according to the archaeologists the Mayan people well the Mayan children they would have used a rope a kind of tiny rope which was tight from the hair up until the middle of their eyes and at the end of that rope they tied a, 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 a jewel or something that catch the child, the child vision. So because of that jewel, those children, they look at it for 
many days or for many weeks, maybe month, we're not sure about that, but eventually their eyes got crossed. Okay? Again, it was in order to rise up their social stratus and beauty, especially beauty. You know, that's another, it's a, that's a different concept or conception of beauty. Or also the Mayans, they loved it to get what we call today tattoos. But actually, it is called it is scarification. What's that? It's just to take, what well, to hunt a manta ray and then take its stingray, which is basically a, a knife of 20 centimeters long, and then just to make carving reliefs on their bodies, face. And afterwards, those carving reliefs were got painted. They were painted by using natural pigmentations that came from bugs, roots, trees, leaves, etc., etc. So we have more example of Mayan beauty. And another such important and development among the Mayas and in the whole Americas, their mathematic system. Have you ever? And have you ever seen this before at school, maybe, the, the numbers, the Mayan numbers? Do you remember how many symbols do we have for the Mayan numbers? Do you remember that? No? Well, we have three symbols. The most important one is the zero. The zero is represented by a seashell, a stylized seashell. It is a kind of a rounded, uh, well, semi, a kind of... Um, oval, a kind of oval, and at the middle there is a tiny line, and we have two, three more vertical lines, so that's the zero, that was invented by the Mayas before it was invented, well, the actual zero, the, the zero that we use today, before it was invented. The Mayas, we have records that the Mayas invented the zero approximately 36 before Christ. In Europe, the, uh, the zero that we use today, it was invented up to the 12th century. Okay, it was developed. But the Mayas invented their own conception of zero, 36, approximately 36 before Christ. Okay? Then we have the second symbol, dots. Yes, circles, dots. And the third symbol, bars, a vertical bar. Okay? The dot, one dot means one. Two dots, two. Three dots, three. And four dots, four. Piece of the game. The bar, that means five. How do we get six? We need a bar plus a dot on the top. Seven. A bar plus two dots on the top, etc., etc. And Fifteen, three bars, one on top of each other. Seventeen, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, sixteen, three bars and one dot on the top. Seventeen, three bars and two dots on the top. Eighteen, three bars and three dots on the top. Are you following me? Okay, well, piece of a cake. But we, we, we have 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, etc., etc. The Mayas also invented their own position system. Let's compare. We use nowadays the Arabical Decimal System, which also uses a position system, which comes from the right to the left. On the very right, we've got units, then tens, then hundreds, then thousands, etc., etc. But to the Mayas, this doesn't make sense at all. So that's why they invented their own position system, which comes from the bottom to the top. Okay? The other way around, from the bottom to the top. So per level or per position, that's the actual word, position, we are allowed to use maximum three bars and four dots. Three bars and four dots, maximum per position. So if you were thinking that in order to get 20, we have to join four bars, that's no wrong. We can't use four bars. So how, how do you think we could get the 20? Maybe 
Yes, we need this syrup and what else? Sorry? One or two dots? Where? Below or above? Twenty. You are very close, but actually twenty is the seashell, okay, the, the oval, and on top one dot. That means that now we are using the second position. On the second position, a single dot is not anymore one. It becomes 20. Okay? Try to follow me. On the second position, a single dot becomes 20. For instance, if we had two dots on top of the zero, what number is that? 40. Three dots, 60. Four dots, 80. Did you get it? And what about the bar? A bar on top of the zero. It's not five anymore. It's not 50. 100. Every bar, each bar becomes 100. But we have more positions which is an endless position system. That's why it is called the vigesimal numerical system of the Mayas, because its base is 20. What we have to do in order to get the rest of the numbers is a multiplication. Let's, let's review this. varieties or how many of kind of corn do you know? Yellow. The yellow one? Yes. <laughs> Baby one. Sorry? Frozen corn. Frozen corn. <laughs> so the average is between two and three kind of corn. But guess what? In Mexico we have over 60 kind Ooh. of maize. Yellow ones, maize. red one, black maize ones, color. purple maize. ones, maize. and maize. white <laughs> ones like this size or bigger ones. So we have a large variety of corn in the in Mexico. Well, that's why corn, it was such important and resource for the ancient civilizations in Mexico. And well, and also we have uh, a myth in the Mayan mythology that we humans, we were created three times. Uh, the first time that the creator gods gathered they took, they took some mud and they arise the first humans made out of mud. But these people, they have no feelings and they overall they didn't invoke and then they, and also they didn't uh, in, please their gods and they got mad of this and they sent a very heavy rain and they were just washed out and they were destroyed. The, sec, the, the second time the gods gather again and they took wood in the jungle and they arise wooden people but it happened the same and again they were washed out but this time uh, the creator gods they sent uh, acid sap rain okay that's why they were washed out and the third time this the creator gods gathered they took mace they arise corn man and this time, they, 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 his their creation was very good because they built amazing temples, majestic cities, and overall they placed their creator gods. That's why it is said the Mayas were created, according to the Mayan mythology, they, they were created from corn, from maize. Okay, well, in front of you, there is a ceremonial temple. Usually, on top of the ceremonial temples, we have a, a sanctuary. But, since the archaeologists did not find remains of standing walls, they assumed that the sanctuary on the top would have been made out of organic materials. A thatched roof and wooden walls. That's why the sanctuary is gone. And then we have stairways. Very important, because 
Over uh, through the stairways is where the Mayan priest walk all the way to the top, and on the top in the sanctuary they performed their ceremonies. Again, it is it, the temple was built strictly for ceremonial purposes. And unfortunately, the decoration on the walls is gone. The Mayan people, they invented their own concrete or plastron, call it a stucco from limestone. The Yucatan Peninsula, the ground of the Yucatan Peninsula is made out of limestone. It's a very porous stone, and because of that, the rainfall gets filtered through the soil and then through the aquifer, and that's why we have thousands and thousands of sinkholes in the Yucatan Peninsula. Well, the limestone was born and the limestone became like sand, like a white sand. Then the Mayan people added water. <laughs>